to travel somewhere so remote, whether you're a wheelchair user or not, is a really magical experience. But then to be able to do that with a disability was really special. And it was one more goal on my bucket list. Welcome to the Crossing It Off podcast, where we believe living with intention through a bucket list lifestyle is a great way to bring yourself personal joy. As you are crossing items off your list, you're actually filling up your bucket. The more items you cross off, the more joy gets added, until eventually your joy spills over into the lives of those around you. Now, let's start crossing it off together. In my bucket list experience, setting an intention for your list is the best thing you can do when you start this lifestyle. For me... My intention for my list is community. Whether I'm building new community or reinforcing existing community, the majority of the items on my list are built around that intention. Today's bucket list storyteller also has a real deep desire for community and not just finding it, but helping build it in a very special and unique way. We're going to learn how she does it. So let's start crossing it off. This time I'd like to welcome my guest, Kristen Secor. And she describes herself as determined, an advocate, passionate, and sincere. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. What did you cross off your bucket list? I crossed off going to Antarctica in a wheelchair. (laughs) Okay, my mind was blown when we first connected. There's lots of places in the world that I don't think are accessible to folks. And that would be one of them, uh, you know, in your case, <laughs> that I would be like, wow, that, that would be rough. So start us at the beginning. Why are you in a wheelchair? How'd that come about? And what brought you to wanting to go to Antarctica? Sure. So I was born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy that affects my mobility, my balance, my endurance, my strength, and my breathing. So I am on a ventilator full time. Um, so if you hear any noise in the background, that's what it is. Um, and I, muscular dystrophy is a progressive disease. So when I was younger, I had more mobility and abilities than I do now. I can walk with assistance, but when I travel, I travel in a wheelchair because I can only walk short distances. Um, And it helps with my energy and my endurance when I use a wheelchair as well. So that's why I travel in a wheelchair. Um, And then, so Antarctica, one of my goals is to go to all seven continents. Obviously, Antarctica is one of those continents. And I just thought it would be really cool to see the wildlife and to see something that's still kind of wild and ruled by mother nature rather than humans. So how many of the seven have you have you crossed off so far? I've been to four so far. <laughs> and it's impressive to me because Antarctica, you know, I've talked to people that have done this and it's typically the last one people do. Yeah. So to have it there someplace in the beginning is, is, a, is a good feat. So when you told people, your family, your friends, I, I want to do this, I want to go to Antarctica, what was their response and, and how did you respond to that? Oh, they thought I was crazy for sure. Um, they they were like, why do you want to go there? It's freezing and, you know, it's cold and you don't do well in cold weather. And I said, well, that's one of the reasons I want to go now is because when I'm in the cold, my muscles become like temporarily paralyzed. So it's really difficult for me to navigate and just be comfortable in cold weather. But I also said, look, they, you only go to Antarctica and in, the, in their summertime, which is not quite as bad, um, the weather was about low to mid thirties when I was there. And I'm from upstate New York, so I was actually teasing my family. I said it is warmer than Antarctica than it is in upstate <laughs> New York. And I, of course, I wanted to see the wildlife. I'm a huge animal lover, and just I thought it'd be so cool to see penguins and whales in the wild. Okay, so let's you know, for most people, this is. You know, accessibility to Antarctica is rough to begin mm-hmm. with. Uh, I have interviewed someone that did a cruise through Antarctica. So how did the planning and how did you travel and what was the circumstances around actually getting there? Yeah, so there's a couple of options when you want to travel to Antarctica. The most popular way is cruising um, because it's one of the easiest Um, But there's different types of cruises that you can take. There's expedition ships. There's like the major cruise lines like Princess, Holland America, you know, those big names that we all know. Um, So I looked into what all my options were. Unfortunately, expedition ships really are not designed for accessibility. Mm. 
Um, but the bonus of that is you actually get to step foot on the continent, right? They have little Zodiac boats that they take ashore and stuff, but those Zodiac boats are definitely not wheelchair accessible. Um, so I chose a bigger cruise line. I sailed with Holland America. And so that one, you don't actually step foot on the continent. But you sail by and you get to sail in to some of the bays and things like that, which was really cool. And for me, that was enough. Like, yes, it would be cool to put a wheel on Antarctica. However, the terrain is very mountainous. It's very rocky. It's very uneven. So even if I could make it ashore, I think it would still be very difficult to navigate that continent in a wheelchair just because of the ice and the terrain so I was perfectly happy just to sail by and to experience that um so that's what I chose and when I was looking at the major cruise lines to decide okay which one's going to be the best for me um one of the reasons I chose Holland America is because it combined more of South America and that was my third continent that I was going to so I wanted to experience it as much as I could um, I went into some of the fjords in Chile to see some of the glaciers and things like that, which was really, really cool. And I spent a full four, four and a half days in Antarctica itself. Um, so some of the other cruise lines, like I think Celebrity and Norwegian are starting Antarctic and, and itineraries, but they only spend like two days down there. So I'm like, no, I want the most experience. I can get. So that's why I chose the cruise line I did. And so as far as accessibility on the cruise line, what were some of the things that were helpful to you? And maybe what were some of the things that you would email the the cruise line and say, hey, you may want to approve this. What are some of those things? Yeah. So on this ship, it's generally good. Um, Most of the major cruise lines have wheelchair accessible cabins that have more room that you can turn around, accessible bathrooms, things like that. So on the ship, the accessibility was quite good. I think the one thing, and I have been in contact with them about it, is one of their advertisements specifically for Holland America was that they have wheelchair accessible tenders. So tenders are used when the ship can't dock and they kind of anchor offshore, and then they take, like, the lifeboats to get you to ashore. And a lot of the ports in Chile um, were tender ports. So I was expecting to be able to, you know, see and do everything I wanted. And then when I got there, they're like, well, yeah, it's accessible, but you can do steps, right? And I'm like, well, that's not the definition of accessible. (laughs) I mean, so they had an elevator that takes you down to the tender platform so that avoids you know basically a whole flight of steps but then they had like a step to get on the tender or there was a gap between the tender platform and the actual tender so unless you can like step over a gap or have someone lift you in the wheelchair then it's really not fully accessible and unfortunately i missed some of the parts i was really looking forward to as a result of that so let's go back to antarctica Mm-hmm. So, so you're on the ship and and you're seeing whatever it is that you're looking for. What was that experience like? How did you get to experience what you wanted to in Antarctica? So one of the really special things about Antarctica is it's incredibly quiet. There's not a lot of noise pollution. There's not a lot of, I mean, you hear a little bit of a hum of the ship, but they slow down a lot so that that, you know they're watching for wildlife they don't want to endanger anything that's around them they're looking for icebergs so that they you know don't hit one and become the titanic um so the it's just very very peaceful and then you'll see whales come right up to the ship i mean like Mm. 20 feet away there was lots of humpback whales and they were just peacefully riding through the water and then we saw orca whales which was my first time seeing them in the wild which was incredible um it was just like a little pod a little family of them um and then the penguins i mean the penguins were sometimes a little farther away but sometimes they were swimming in the water and you were like holy moly how can they swim that fast (laughs) because on land you know they waddle and they're slow and a little clumsy and um just to see them kind of running after each other and playing and you know jumping in the water and just you know just being themselves and these huge icebergs i mean it's hard to describe the size of these icebergs some were almost as tall as the ship 
Mm. Um, I have a picture of, because I, I couldn't believe it, because um, so in Oregon, there's a lot of mountains and there's a lot of glaciers coming down the mountains. So you have the icebergs, which have broken off from the glaciers, but you have the glaciers themselves. And I have this picture of this cruise ship in front of this glacier in one of the mountains and the glacier is taller than the cruise ship. It was, I mean, it was just incredible. You feel so small and tiny and just surrounded by the power of mother nature. And it really makes you appreciate just nature itself, the wildness and really how little control you have in the grand scheme of things. That's amazing. Uh, so did you use like binoculars? Did you use a telephoto lens? How does that work when you're on the ship and do they provide those things for you? Or So if you have one of the higher grade cabins, like a suite, sometimes they will provide per, um, binoculars. I was in an inside cabin. I was traveling on a budget. So um, I, did, I did bring binoculars, but I also have a really good camera that has a really good zoom lens. It's just a point and shoot size. It's not one of the DSLRs or mm-hmm. anything like that because with my strength restrictions, it's hard for me to lift a camera to be able to use it. So I use a little uh, Canon point and shoot and it was really fantastic. Fantastic. Some of the big photographers on the ship were really impressed because there were times I would just use my camera as the binoculars to search for stuff, especially when I was looking for wildlife, because once I found it, I wanted to get that shot because wildlife can just decide to jump in the water and move away at any moment. So I wanted to be ready. That does sound like that was helpful. Uh, It's a good tip for anybody else going. Was this a solo trip for you or does someone go with you or how, how do you travel when you travel? Um, so I, unfortunately, I'm not able to travel solo um, because of my strength restrictions and some of my mobility restrictions. I definitely need assistance. And a lot of the airlines actually have a rule and a requirement that if you cannot evacuate yourself in the case of an emergency, that you have to travel with someone. Um, so I traveled with a friend of mine um, and we had a blast uh, and we traveled quite a bit together Um but I always travel with someone that can assist me. And so you, you've done this trip and you've been able to see the wildlife and, and all these amazing things on it. You're back flying home. How? What's your emotions as far as the experience and impacting you? How, how did you feel at that moment? I was so overjoyed and really thankful. I think thankful is probably the biggest one um, because I think when you're, when you get to travel somewhere so remote, whether you're a wheelchair user or not, it's a really magical experience. But then to be able to do that with a disability was really special. And it was one more goal on my bucket list, right? One more thing. And it was something that... You know, you wonder, can I do it? What is it going to be like? How's the cold going to affect me? And to say, you know what? I did that. I met the challenges. I braved the cold. And actually, sometimes you forget about the cold. I have to say, Mm -hmm. like when you're there and you're so excited because you're seeing all the scenery and the wildlife, you really forget what the temperature is to a certain degree. And so to come back and then try to tell my family and my friends, like, you're crazy if you don't want to go to Antarctica because it's <laughs> such a magical place. And it really took some time to process, to really fully, you know, absorb the whole experience. Um, I always journal when I travel to help me with that. But just, I think the two emotions I would probably describe the most were joy and thankfulness. Here at the Crossing It Off podcast, we are passionate about inspiring you in your bucket list lifestyle and empowering you to live out your list. We offer many resources to assist you in your bucket list journey, such as web resources in the show notes, bucket list mentoring services, my book, Live Out Your Lists, a private Facebook group for you to share your bucket list success stories with others, and more. All of these can be found at crossingitoffpodcast.com. Find the resource that fits your need so that you can live out your list. Now back to the show. 
That's awesome. So extrapolating that out after having time to think about it, was there any major change or transformation in you as a person that happened through that trip? Is there something you walked away with like, oh, I, I know this about myself now? I think it helped me to become more confident in what my abilities are. Um, when you meet challenges, like I mentioned, the tender situation or, you know, just the cold and how you're going to adapt. Once you experience that and you kind of have to problem solve in the moment, it becomes such a confidence booster to say, I did it. I survived it. You know, it didn't, um, it may not have been the smoothest trip, but it also wasn't the worst. And there were so many amazing things that came from it. So like to say, okay, now I can take on the next trip. I can, you know, feel confident going to other places that people would be like, why are you going there? And it's definitely not accessible. You're crazy. Mm. I, I love the confidence building. I think that's fantastic. If somebody else in your situation that needed more accessibility came to you and said, I want to go to Antarctica and I want to do this. What would be something that you would tell them to say, Oh, if you're going to do this, you need to do X. What is the X? I would say just have multiple plans for when things can and will go wrong. Um, But I would just say, be prepared. Um, don't, don't let concern and fear hold you back. If this is something you really, really want to do, go for it. I'm always a big proponent of, you know, challenging yourself and following your dreams. Um, so I think the cold weather for a lot of people with mobility issues, regulating their body temperature is a very difficult thing. So I would say, look into what's available. That's going to help you the most. I know what helped me is I found what's called a wheelchair cozy. So it's like a little sleeping bag you put on your wheelchair and it zips up and it so it insulates your legs um, and it comes just above your waist. I also used a hand warmer because my um, extremities get really um, cold very quickly and that really helped me to be more comfortable. So I would say don't let the fear of the cold stop you. There are definitely products out there that will help you um, be more comfortable. It won't be like being inside but it'll definitely be more comfortable and it'll let you follow your dreams of going to this really incredible place. That's that's some awesome advice. Uh, Kristen, what is something else on your bucket list that you are going to cross off? Africa. So next year I'm going to Africa. I'm going on a fully wheelchair accessible safari. Um, So obviously keeping with the animal theme because I'm an animal lover. Um, I just want to see so many animals in their natural environment, you know, while, while you can, um, because you never know what life center present you or bring your way. So I am so thrilled to be going to Africa and seeing just all the wildlife I can. Okay. I got a lot of questions. So first off, where in Africa? Um, so actually my, um, my first plan is South Africa. Um, and that's, where the fully accessible safari is taking place. But then I'm going to either Rwanda or Uganda to do a gorilla trek because, believe it or not, they have made that accessible. Um, They have actually hired um, former poachers. They've given them legitimate jobs to help carry you through the jungle to get to these gorillas. So, so excited about that. And then... Um, a company reached out to me. They found out I was going to South Africa. They're from Tanzania. And they said, well, if you're already going to be in Africa, we would love for you to come check out our company and come to the Serengeti and come to, you know, see Kilimanjaro and all that. So I've quite the the bucket list for Africa, but it's going to be amazing. That's awesome that they have that availability. To, to allow you to see the gorillas. Uh, and I and I do know from having another guest that's done that, that the travel length varies, right? They, mm-hmm. they monitor all the gorillas. So they for people listening, it's not like they're necessarily carrying you like tens and 20 kilometers you know, <laughs> out into the, yeah. to the jungle that, that there are some, they'll track and know exactly the closest pod of gorillas to take you to. So that's, that's a good thing right. that you're not having you yourself. I mean, it's one thing carrying you, but it's you yourself having to go through that process too. And, right. You know that it's, it's not, it's not far. So the South African outfit that 
is fully wheelchair accessible. Can you describe what that looks like as far as what's available to you as far as that company goes? Yeah, so the company I'm using has, um, first they have a fully accessible guest house in Cape Town. So I'm going to get to explore a little bit of Cape Town. They have a wheelchair adapted vehicle that has a lift on it so that you can stay right in your wheelchair and travel in their van with them as they take you around and tour. Um, They have looked at what is accessible. So for example, when I'm in Cape Town, the cable car to go to the top of Tabletop Mountain is wheelchair accessible. So I can go to the top of Tabletop Mountain for wonderful views. Um, They're going to take us around the coast and see a penguin colony around the coast of South Africa. Um, And then within Kruger National Park, which is um, where one of the safaris is taking place, they actually have adapted um, accommodations at two of the camps with, you know, roll-in showers and grab bars and things like that. And if, um, and then we go to our private game reserve that's mostly adapted. So what, one of the things the company does is that if the, place you're staying does not have all of your needs they can add like a shower chair so if you can't stand in the shower you have some place to sit while you're bathing they have you know extra things to help you with they can help you with you know transferring if you have a hard time with that um and they just they've been doing this since 2001 so they really know what they're doing in terms of accessibility which I really appreciate, um, and I'm just really excited to use them and to see everything. Is there a specific resource you use as far as finding accessibility travel? Is, is there someplace you go online that's that's helpful to you? So I do a lot of the research myself. Um, I love planning trips. So like, that's probably, if I was a superhero, that's my superpower. <laughs> you know, like planning trips and epic trips. Um, so Google is my best friend. Um, I, and I challenge myself. I'll say, okay, is there a wheelchair accessible safari in South Africa? And they'll come up with companies or there are times when I'm connected with other, um, disability travel groups on Facebook. So I will ask you a question from my other travelers. Have you done this? Where, what have you used? What's your personal experience? Because I think it's one thing to read something online from Google, right? And from a company promoting themselves. And it's another thing to get personal firsthand experience. Um, And so I try to do a combination of both. That's awesome. I did that with my trip to cross the the Camino de Santiago off my bucket list. The Facebook Mm -hmm. groups were very helpful. Just listening to people's stories, personal stories, and and hearing their thoughts and having other people respond to those definitely a a good thing to do for Mm -hmm. for any item so if folks are interested in finding more about you and what you do where can they find you online so i have a wheelchair accessible travel blog called worldonwheelsblog.com um and so i write about my journeys i write about resources so as much as i love the research i know other people do not And it would be amazing to have everything in one place to really look at, okay, what is the firsthand experience? What companies can I use? And all of that. So I try to put all of that on my blog. I also try to um, just inspire people to travel to places they never thought were accessible. I mean, every destination is going to have its own challenges. Um, But you can read about where I've traveled, um, what the accessibility was like how I challenged myself, and then how you can do it too, because I love helping people travel to their dream destinations. That's a big passion. That's awesome. I I love the idea also of um, people that don't need those accessibility to to kind of look into some of those companies that do offer all that and support them by using them, you know, not taking up resources for those that need it, but Mm -hmm. definitely trying to find as you're planning your trip outfits that are engaged in, you know, providing accessibility to other folks because you're only helping support that issue. And I think that's, that's awesome. So Christian, when you go to Africa, are you traveling with your friend again, or what are you doing as far as that's concerned, as far as partnership and traveling? 
So I'm, one of the things I'm really excited about is I am starting to organize small group tours that are wheelchair accessible. So I'm actually inviting my readers, my followers to join me on this trip. Um, I think it's a is a bucket list destination, not only for me, but for many other people. And I want to make that planning easier. So I've done all the planning, the research. So all they have to do is sign up and join me. And then I also look at um, accessible travel from the cost standpoint. Mm. Usually for accessible travel, it costs at least twice as much as traditional <sighs> travel, often more. So one of the things I also wanted to do was to try to make travel more affordable for my readers. And when you're doing a small group tour, you're splitting the cost of what normally might have been a private tour that could cost um, $10,000 or more. And now that we're traveling as a small group, no more than 12 people, it really breaks down to that cost to a more manageable level. So I'm really excited to just bring people with me and share that travel experience. I think one of the best and really cool things about travel is the people you meet along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and so getting to share that with people that have similar challenges as me, but also have a passion for, for travel is going to be really special. That's awesome. I'm a little curious. Uh, does that reduce the number of folks that need to go with, like your friend, or or is or is that still in place? You, is it? Yeah. So my friend's still going to travel with me because she assists me personally, and you know. <laughs> daily activities and things like that. But that's the nice thing is that, okay, so if you're a wheelchair user and you want to join this tour, but let's say your spouse is not disabled, they can come too. You know, there's not, it's really about accepting everyone because I also want to remind people that while disabilities can be obvious for like someone using a wheelchair, they can also be hidden. So people with chronic pain, people that are slow walkers and things like that, they often have trouble with their traditional big tours because of those issues. And so I always invite people, even if your disability is not obvious, if you're not a wheelchair user, maybe you're a slow walker, you use a cane, or maybe you have chronic pain and you just have to pace yourself or have some kind of autoimmune dis disorder that really um, zaps your energy. Everyone is welcome on this trip for sure. Kristen, thank you so much for being here and telling your story. I um, immediately thought when you said what you're doing next, that I would offer for you to come back for sure. I've never had a, <laughs> I've never had a repeat guest in a hundred episodes. So I, I would love you to be the first. So when you get back from Africa, let me know and we'll have you back on the show. Oh, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Excellent. Thank you for being here. Thank you.